Excuse me. Huh? Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Okay. How's your dad doing? He's doing good. Um, like I said, I'm moving back to to Atlanta. So my mom's still got her horses, put her yeah, around with them. But we play golf once or twice a week. And great. I took him to Iowa. It's the first time he's ever been to Iowa hunting. This, well, he didn't hunt, but he was. He went with me. And uh, that was fun, because that was, that was something that we haven't been Your able to do in a while. Your dad's, what, 70? 60, he'll be 69 in June. Okay. So I don't know that you and I r really had any Interaction correspondence then. during just, the just in well we had more during the we World had Series. more in ninety three in Richmond. Yeah. And then when yeah. I was in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's when I first heard about you know, what kind of a player you were and then actually seeing it firsthand, you were like, Yeah, this is gonna be special. <laughs> you were you played I think he was as a defensive player more polished and he was a switch hitter. I mean, this guy, this guy got hits, you know, and, and at that point in my career, you know, I still hit for pretty good average, and then that's about the time I was making those tweaks with what Charlie did with my stance. Yeah. He opened me up, yeah. uh, freed my hips. I did, I saw a great piece that D-Row did on you at the network, how with your toe tap and then where you stand in the box, you could tell that once your hips free and they're easy to the ball, everything else kind of flows. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You didn't so. never lock yourself off. I think, and I didn't really watch much right-handed, but especially left-handed, you were slightly open. Same thing. My a lot of people thought that I stepped in the bucket. You know, I mean, from from the point of my toe tap to where it came back down and hit the ground, I was stepping more towards second base the right of the left mound, hand yes but the hips were the hips were staying closed that little move that little open move allowed once i decided to pull the trigger it allowed everything to flow you know yes. now where i got in trouble is when the hips when when the foot hit the ground the hips open a little bit now you lose everything to the off yes. field but that was that was my strength, our strength, you know, hitting the ball out of the ballpark from foul pole to foul pole, but especially center, center field. and left. Yep. Yeah. yeah, not having interaction with Charlie Manuel is one thing that I wish I would have had because he was brilliant, you know, and, and that little move right there, you can go back through the course history. And one guy that comes to mind for me because I had interaction with him was Willie Stargell. And what did he do? Yes. You know, right up until the time the pitch was coming and then he locked it in. Boom. Yeah. You know, I mean, so there's something to be said. For me, it was it was the bat movement and the hand movement and then the toe tap, lock it in and, and, and let's go. But there's only there's only one Paul Molitor who could stand up there perfectly still yes. and just absolutely and rake, yes. you know. Um, the rest of us mere mortals <laughs> need some rhythm. So in your, so with what you did, would you say, and not that you thought about it, or did you, I guess the question would be, did you think more about your toe tap or the, the hitting the bat off the shoulder, if you say it? Probably to I me, needed, your hands, because I needed, don't you feel free? I needed to have, yeah. yeah. I needed to have the hands because, you know, I would, uh, I think if I were still, I probably would have taken my hands, you know, more in front of my head, which causes a little, I think causes a little more of a loop instead of around the head. You yeah. know, I always teach trying to, trying to tuck and cock around the head as opposed to in yeah. front of the head. Because then, then when the, when the, when the, when the when the tip of the bat, the top of the bat is fit, right. and it's got that it's, long It's loop. gotta, it's gotta come back this yes. way. It's just that reverse C. Whenever I see a, a reverse C, you know, that's that's when I'm like, okay, we gotta fix that. <laughs> you we know, gotta we gotta, we got, we can't go here. We gotta go here. You know. Yeah. So with switch hitters, it, it, it's funny because um, very seldom are you right from both sides. You know, you're always 
fighting something. You're fighting something mechanically. You're fighting uh, mentally, you know. Um, so I always characterize it this way. You would go two months on from one side of the plate, two months off from the other, and vice versa, all right? And then you would go one month where you had no clue either way, and then you had one month of, where, of just nobody can get me out yes. from either side of the plate. The key was fighting and scratching and clawing during that one month where you had no clue from either side of the plate, just scratching them out, drawing your walks. Man, hey, how many times did you walk away from an 0 for 2 with two walks and go, I'm scuffling? I feel like tonight was a moral victory. Yeah. You know, 0 for 2 with two two walks you know you got a 500 on base percentage you might have you might have scored a run or you know whatever to, to help the team win a game but walks walks keep you sane they, yeah, <laughs> they keep you sane they, 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 they keep you to thinking that well I'm close yeah because you are yeah. working the at bat right. absolutely 0 for fours and 0 for fives are average killers, killers. yes you know so if you can throw those 0 for 2s and even a 0 for 3, you know, with a, maybe a walk and a sack fly or something, that's, you know, you're helping your club win. From a Braves standpoint, I was riding the coattails of that pitching staff. I mean, I you know, I mean, let's make no bones about it. Our offense, we hit 255 as a team. You guys hit over 300. It was their offense against our pitching, you know, and, um, you know, if, uh, if Maddox, Glavin, and Smoltz, and ultimately Avery, ended up winning the biggest game of that series because all we needed to do after winning the first two at home was we just needed one win yeah. in, in Cleveland right. and, and assure ourselves that we could, you know, bring it home, you know, once we got back. We knew we weren't going to come up there and win two out of three or three out of three. You guys were too good, and y'all had a chance to make adjustments against Maddox, and yeah. and, uh, and and y'all beat Smolt. So it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it we were just trying to do what we could. You know, you guys had some pretty fair weather pitchers too. You know, Kenny Hill was was awesome. Hershiser, uh, Charles, uh, uh, Charlie Nagy. Yeah. You know, I mean, El Presidente. El Presidente yeah. pitched two games in yeah. the series. So, um, yeah, our first experience in the, we were all we all all of our eyes were this big. You know, it, it's so different, and you know this. I think it's so different. Your first World Series. It's like you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're taking BP, all this media coverage, and then all of a sudden you're locked in and it's game time. For us, I just the 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 the, the, the consistency that you guys had with your starting pitching mm -hmm. and where you where those guys could pinpoint the baseball. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, we made a really good adjustment against Maddox. Yep. Our right-handers yes. got on the plate. I think Albert Homer to, to right, right field, uh, and then and then look, you know, at that point, then it kind of became an offensive game. And I think wasn't it Justice that said that your guys as fans needed yes. to get into it? Yeah, yep. and yep. then and, and he then, got booed he like got, crazy. Yeah, yeah. so. When he came out and said that, I'll be honest, like from our end, we thought, you know, like maybe, maybe we're back in this. But I, then Glavin, Glavin pitched a heck of a ball game in game six. Well, and Joe Brinkman's strike zone was about this, this, yes. this wide, you know I mean? Well, you're talking about Glavin and El Presidente. <laughs> Good Do luck. <laughs> dominating as much as they did, you know I mean? That, the guy had overpowering stuff, but they could take, you know, Brinkman was probably given about this much off the plate, and by the end of the game, he was probably given about this much because they just kept hitting the yeah. spot a little farther and a little farther, and that's what made our guys, I know especially, so good, you know, I mean, they would start off on the outside corner, and then they move two inches off the outside corner. If the guy gave them that, they go three or four inches off the outside corner. Sometimes they get it, sometimes not. Now you're taking a 17 inch plate and you're making it 25 to 27 yeah. inches. And you know as well as I do, that's very hard to cover, you know? You, well, because your instincts say a ball that's off the black, like it's natural, even, even when you're this age, you know, like 
you're like, oh, that ball's outside. I'm going to take it. Right. And that was the feeling of our lineup during that, that especially that game six, yeah. was we're just going to take. But then you start chasing and you're getting out of your ball game what you're trying to do. Right. And it, was, it was tough. Trying not to strike out. You trying know what I mean? To trying to put the ball in play. play. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Well, I know I ended up figuring out how you felt because in 97 we had the Eric Gregg strike zone in down Florida. in Florida with – with uh, 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 Levon. Levon Hernandez, yeah. and it was the same thing. Like, I, 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 sh- I don't know if I struck out in the first inning, but I took a pitch that felt like it was a foot outside. And uh, I came back, and I go, Bobby, that second strike, I mean, I couldn't have hit that with a telephone pole. And from then on, it was like, well, now I'm just – I got to put the ball – it's the playoffs, you know yeah. what I mean? If, you, if you're striking out, you're not doing any good whatsoever. At least you got a chance if you put the ball in play. Yeah. And But Levon was another one of those guys that could put it where he farther, wanted. Right? Yep, go a little farther. Oh, oh throw that little 60-mile-an-hour curveball and just had us fishing all day. Who on the Braves would you say could do that the best of the top, of the, the big three? Could Clavin? manipulate a strike yeah. zone? There was Maddox. nobody better than Maddox. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nothing against the other two, but Maddox was a surgeon. Absolute surgeon. And you know as well as I, any guy who can make the ball go this way and this way on both sides of the plate, he's tough. That's tough. That's... You know, I mean, uh, very few guys that I have faced during the course of my career have been able to do it. John Burkett was one of them back when he was in his yeah. heyday in, in San Francisco. And Doc, Halliday, Doc could do it. Doc was, I used to love matchups with Doc. You know, he, he that that chess match with, with him was, that was fun. That what was, fun. was what, okay, so when I say this, and I'm, I get asked this a lot. So say you got a ball coming inside as a cutter, then you got a sinker that's going the front door sinker. Like, in your opinion, you can't hit both. Right. So, to me, like, that's the cat and mouse game. Like, and you know this, as we got older in our careers, like, I tell even young kids today, like, it's okay to sit on a pitch. Mm -hmm. Because at some point in your career, you're going to have to give up that fastball in the middle. And if a guy throws you a changeup or a front door sinker, to me, what really changed the game was the cutter. The cutter became really, and honestly, I think we it's got the, out at the, the right time. It's the bane of my existence. It, it, it is, is the no doubt. <laughs> um, my my philosophy on the cutter two seamer is: what counts are they going to throw the cutter? They're going to throw it early. All right. So if I can't, if I don't feel confident hitting the cutter, and by the way, the only way to hit a cutter is to stay inside of it and on top of it. you. Try and pull it. Done. It's over. Yeah. Okay. Did you find yourself cheating at all to try to get to that? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You know how many bats I broke because of that? Um, but okay, so I say to myself, I'm not a good hitter of the cutter. So anything inside I'm I'm taking right. early count. Now, when do they throw the two seamer? To lock you up late with two strikes. That's when you say, All right, if he throws this ball inside, I'm wailing and I'm bailing and wailing. You yeah. know? I mean Yeah. I gotta get the I gotta sense. get the head out because I know it's coming back towards the plate, you know. Right. So that was kind of my philosophy as far as as far as those and, guys and, and and pitch sequence too, yes. knowing what pitch they would throw with two strikes compared to oh oh correct and that and playing I playing a long time I think does that and and the fact that being talented and being able to sell out and say man. It's okay that I get two strikes because that's the area that I can do damage in yeah. when he throws the front door sinker. Well, I mean, 99% of the time, what pitch do we want to put in play? In. I, I, I want to put the, the fastball. fastball. Right, exactly. right. So if he's not going to throw me the, the, the straight fastball on two strikes, okay, well, I'll, I'll sit up there and maybe sit off speed early in the count. Maybe you hang me one. Maybe you try and throw me something soft. Or get me over strike and I'm waiting for it. 
but I'm selling out with two strikes. It's the, see the the chess match, and it's constantly changing. You know, I mean, it's constantly changing with all pitchers. It's a fight to see who makes the first adjustment. You know, it is. This guy, whenever he walked to the plate, was in scoring position <laughs> right away. You know, I mean, when he stepped in the box, he was in scoring position. He's the the prototypical power guy. He can leave from foul pole to foul pole, which I always respected because you know there's a there's an off field for a reason you know and and it makes you that much harder to pitch to when you're not afraid to to do damage you know to the opposite field um i I admire the fact that no matter where he went he was beloved by his his teammates his coaches his cities um as i set up on the on the day day is today um you know, he, he's he's done a ton for for people less fortunate than him and I just I think he's you know, we we hit it off I think from day one in in triple A, you know, and and our, our careers from then on kind of kinda of mirrored each other, but I've always pulled for him and, and really, you know, before this was at this ever came to fruition we texted each other and we were like, Man, how cool would it be if we were sitting up there, you know, going in on the first ballot together, you know, all the way from Charlotte and Richmond in 1993, and there's nobody I'd rather go in with than him. First of all, the pressure coming out of high school and being the player that he was. You sign with the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves are on TV virtually like the Chicago Cubs. You come home, you turn on the Braves game. And how he's handled himself to the degree of keeping his level of play consistent from high school to the minor. I saw him in the minor leagues. And then as the as he became a big leaguer, I mean, everyone knew Chipper Jones. And he wanted to get better every year, and he did. Playing at a hugely impact position at third base, what it does on your body, and, and the preparation over the long haul, you really, I think it's why you know, there's a hand, I shouldn't say hand few, but hand few of, few of third basemen that have gone into the Hall of Fame. It's a testament of his father, his family, the work they've put in, and himself. You know, we, we have this support system around us. From, a, from afar, I've always admired the confidence that he showed. It's not cocky. It was a confidence that when I hit the field, I want to be put in the situation to be the guy. And and I think that's why he's here today as a Hall of Famer for many reasons. But, But the thing that stands out to me is once we built that personal relationship, you know, and it's always easy to view a guy on the other side, but I gotta tell you, he's as genuine and down to earth as anybody wants to meet, as obviously you're witnessing here today. And I'm so proud to be able to go in with him because I think we'll forever be together going into the Hall of Fame. It's so much more than than him or I, but to go in with these guys is just so special and I, I feel so blessed. That's crazy, you know, I mean, you think, uh... The best amateur players would, would you know, more of the best amateur players would go, uh, you know, would make more appearances into the Hall of Fame. I by no means felt I was the best player in my draft. It was just a matter of a certain team needing a certain type of player and them having the first pick in the draft. Um, I'm very thankful that the Braves, you know, took me. I'm from the Southeast. All their, you know, minor league teams are in the Southeast, and obviously playing on a super station where my, you know, my parents can can get to watch me play, but uh, ah, tremendous honor. I mean, you know, anytime you can be in a category with uh, with the kid, you know, I grew up hearing about Junior all the time. When he got drafted, everybody knew it was just a matter of time before he was making an impact in the big leagues. And then obviously, once he made the impact in the big leagues, it was just a foregone conclusion. He was going to be in the, you know, a Hall of Famer the path was less clear for me you know I mean it took me going out and and doing it for a long time and and whatnot but uh, obviously I think having to deal with that pressure early on in my career kind of prepared me for the pressures that would 
happen, you know, once once the lights got a lot brighter. So um, I won't I won't be the last. Trust me. There's a bunch of good one and ones that are coming along. That uh, if they stay healthy, are certainly going to be joining us one day. Yeah, I mean, how do you ever envision? I mean, Was it home run 500 or <laughs> home run 600? <laughs> you know, you know, we talked about it today. I don't ever, I, I, I don't think you look at the numbers as much as the process and the fact that there is a point where you do look up and you go, man, this would be, maybe, maybe this could be. And then, and then the last year, I've got to say, life goes very quick. And, and as this year came about, I thought, wow, we might have, we as a group, not me, we as a group might have a chance to, to go in. And it, it's, I gotta tell you, it's something very special to look up and to have somebody say you're a first ballot. Wow, I, I mean, pinch both of us because, you know, when you're a kid playing in high school, when you're 10 years old, like my son, I mean, you don't ever envision it, you, you just, you go through the process and you play the game and you have fun. That's that's what, and you've got boys. Mm -hmm. And when they get in the truck and they put on that eye black or they have a ball game, there's nothing better than yeah. a smile on yeah. their face. And that's, I think that's where it all starts. We we were just blessed with longevity and, and talent and people around us that really helped our careers. Yeah. Do you have a, a story about one another that you can share that might be appropriate? <laughs> yeah, we got a we, we, we got a good one. I think the uh, and I'm pretty sure he could probably tell it better. But I don't want your version. It was it was it, I put it in my book. All right, the, I mean it, we uh, we played against each other in AAA and and we had a very good ball club, a, a club that was full of, of everyday prospects. Studs. They had uh, a very good ball, a lot older uh, club, even though you and Manny were, were just kind of coming up. They had Sam Horn and Alan Cockrell and uh, oh, shoot, Paul Bird was on that team, yeah. Chad OJ. OJ. Yeah. yeah, so um, we were nip and tuck the whole year, our, our two teams. You know, we were chasing them, they were chasing us. We didn't like them. They didn't like us, you know. But and so I still didn't didn't know him, you know, at all. Well, they were at our place one night, and uh, we were Dave Island, the pitching coach for yeah. for the Royals, was pitching, and Ryan Klesko hit a ball off Dave Island that hasn't landed yet. I mean, it was a bomb, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, Klesko had he. Whirly birded it, you know, gave out this yell, and I'm thinking to myself, man, that would probably piss me off, you know. And and lo and behold, bottom of the eighth comes, and Klesko's coming up, and yeah. we're handing it to him pretty good. I think we're we're beating him by four or five runs. They bring their closer in, and I'm thinking, well, that's weird. I mean, why would they be bringing their closer in now four or five runs? Well. I soon got the answer. Uh, Bill Wirtz. Bill Wirtz, my boy from Cleveland. Throws a, like a 96 mile an hour fastball behind Klesko. All right, so we clear, nothing happens, right? Everybody's just kind of jawing and whatnot. We get back on, you know, you know, Klesko gets back in the box. Wirtz gets back on the mound. Wirtz throws him a heater down the middle, and Klesko flings the bat over Wirtz's head into center field. Well, it's on now okay so we come piling out they come piling out and the next thing i know it's like the hand of god grabs me around the throat okay all right and my face is up against the backstop like this and all i can hear is don't you move and i look over and that hand of god was jim Tomei's hand <laughs> so well the the funny part about it is i have my parents in town that weekend right and they're sitting in the third row so when he smashes my face into the netting behind home plate you should have seen the look of terror on my mother's face it was priceless but we've been boys ever since <laughs> so it, it, it the, the story is correct all of it <laughs> it is it is but but i think what it was is we were trying to end the brawl like you get into a pile yeah. and it's like 
you, you look, look. I mean, I don't think I ever went into a pile to throw a haymaker. Right, no. I think what it was was to get if you if you come in contact with somebody, the heat of the moment puts you in the situation to either move them or you get moved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and 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 I I remember cuz Billy Wirtz actually Bill threw very hard. Very hard. And you know, looking back to 95 when we got into that little, little confrontation, even in the World Series, mm-hmm. Klesko was, you know, whir- was twirling after he would hit. And then and then everybody always asked me. He had a home run in three or four straight games in did. the World Series. He did. Yeah. And the emotions, because I can attest for it, I bat flipped against Klontz, mm-hmm. but it wasn't, and I'm, I'm being very honest, it wasn't a malicious, like, Take I'm that. gonna do this yeah. against you guys. Yeah. It was just the emotions that yeah. come out. And it's I, a World I think I think Ryan was a very passionate player. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's but, funny. To look but back. you wouldn't blame, especially back then. You wouldn't blame somebody for taking exception. Okay, you showed us up. We're gonna dot you once, you know, in the yes. butt cheek, yes. and it's gonna and, be and over. You move and on. everybody moves on. Yeah. Now it's like. An eye for an eye, and oh well, you shouldn't have done that. So we're gonna hit you again. You know, I yeah. mean, it just it, it 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 goes. It lingers too much yeah. today. Yeah. Agreed. Well, hopefully we don't have to see the hand of God come out. The hand of it God was, is not gonna come it, out. It was unbelievable. I was like, it, it was just, now. it was, and it wasn't even like, it wasn't even like, don't you know, like this echoing thing. It was just a very calm. Hey man, if you want to keep your head. <laughs> don't move. You know, it's very matter of fact, and you know, I, I, I relented. <laughs> Why the wise move? Oh. I was I was six three, one hundred and eighty five pounds, and a grown man had a hold of me. You guys, you guys had a heck of a team, and I think looking back through the minor leagues, competing against a team like Richmond, as talented as they were, I think made us all better. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Great story. Thanks, guys. Yeah.